So repair versus construction. I was lucky enough, let's see, I picked up my first search early 80s through a railroad. And then I switched to a cat supplier, picked up D1.1 unlimited thickness cert, and a bunch of other certs through them. But when I kind of went out on my own, it was it was an opportunity to jump right into heavy equipment repair. Um, long story short, I knew a company, a big gravel company, biggest gravel company along the front range. And I kind of fell into their stuff because I made a good rep. I was working for a drilling company and I made a hell of a name for myself for my shit not breaking, man. That's what my rep is. I'll stay all night so you can have your stuff in the morning and my shit don't break, man. That's just the bottom line. But I'd repaired a, uh, a dump truck latch through another company, a diesel shop. And it took me a few hours. Like, you know, I, I always look at everything and I, A, why did it break? You know, is there something else broke that's making this break type situation? And then I better anything I can along the way. If I can come up with a better idea that where your shit won't break, then I'm going to go that route. And that's what I did on this dump truck. Um, the factory latches were just Sesame Street. So I kind of redesigned stuff a little bit and made it a little beefier and went and got that guy when I was done because I was working for him on the side after, you know, I did my hours at the drilling company. Boy, that guy just blew a gasket. That was kind of my first taste at how crooked most of these businesses are. He came over and looked at that latch I did on that dump truck and just blew a effing gasket. This will never effing break. What the fuck are you thinking, man? Cut all this shit off here and put it back how it was. I want this fucking truck back for the same goddamn thing in 30 fucking days. I just looked at him. Are you serious, dude? You fucking A's, man. And he stomped off, so... I cut what I did all back off and put it back to how the factory shit was so it'd break again in a month or two and he could bill them for the same crap again. Well, meanwhile, I kind of knew the one guy that ran the one gravel company and I just went and had a little talk with him. He was pissed then. He was like, fuck, no wonder we don't get anywhere with our shit and it's always breaking again. So right out the gate, I, I picked up that gravel account like seven, eight, nine yards along the front range and that was what got me in there though. And then ended up doing a fair amount of construction in the beginning too. I knew a couple guys that worked at machine shops. So I got a lot of stuff through the machine shops back in the nineties. And that's how I got stuff. I got stuff in five countries with my name on it. Here 10, 12 years ago, I shipped two monster earthquake testing tables that I built for a company, one to Pakistan and one to Patras, Greece. But the heavy equipment repair, there's definitely a shortage of good repair welders. And it kind of just boiled down to the headaches and the hassles and the money involved. I mean, somebody calls me and they got a busted loader bucket or something. There's, you know, yeah, you broke it. Well, can you fix it? Yeah, I can fix it. Can you pay me? Well, yeah, I can pay you. See you in the morning, dude. I'll have your stuff fixed. What do you mean in the morning? I'll stay all night so you can have your shit in the morning, dude. And then you can operate and you don't have a crew standing around with their thumb in their butt. Oh, shit, man, you're the man, you're the man. And they're so much more grateful to pay you on the heavy equipment repair because of situations like that. They might be losing thousands a day. They're very grateful to have a good repair welder come to their place. And even if it's not staying all night, get their stuff fixed so that they're not losing that money through the day for the rest of the week. Versus construction, I got into handrail and million dollar houses, one to three million dollar houses for uh, about three or four years. What a disaster. I mean, I don't know how many times I ended up negotiating my money or, you know, well, the electrician hung us out and, and the plumber. I don't give a shit about your electrician, lady. I'm not the electrician, man. Well, the plumber, I don't give a shit about your plumber either. That's not what we talked about, man. No, I'm not going to wait an extra six months to get my frick of money because the plumber hung you out. That's not my problem, man. But it seems like all the construction jobs like that are the same way. Had the same problem in Michigan. Got up there and there's electricians in the room I'm supposed to be working in. Threw the whole job behind. Everybody was pissed off. Everybody was complaining, pawning their stuff off on the every, you know, all the other subs. It's just a disaster versus the heavy equipment repair. You don't have inspectors. You don't have plumbers and electricians and drywallers and all these people holding you up, keeping you from shining on your job. So, and you know, and then it's, it's, it's competition. You know, Joe Blow says he'll do the rail for 10 bucks a foot cheaper than you. 
Well, go have Joe Blow do it then. I couldn't care less, man. I'll go work on a loader bucket, you know. Well, can you meet us? Can you drop this a little bit? I've never had anybody question anything in 38 years of heavy equipment repair. Question the rate, question how long it took. Nothing. It's just so much simpler than construction. You don't have the other six subs floating around getting in your way. You don't have inspectors popping by and whining and crying something or another. And you don't have a homeowner coming in and changing their mind three quarters of the way through the job. And I had a shop I helped do some rail with here in the late 90s in Boulder. And uh, we were dry fitting everything, big helical coils on the bottom of the rails and stuff. It was, it was 10 point ornamental rail. And uh, we were dry fitting the last piece when the homeowners came by and she was just, God, this looks so nice. Her husband was coming up behind, patting me and the other guy in the back. This looks great, man. You guys did an awesome job. You know, cool. This is the last piece. We're going to dry fit it, take it back. We'll fry it all up and bring it back. And, you know, after it's powder coated, we didn't get 20 minutes down the road, a million dollar house. And this lady called, oh, well. You know, I, I think we're going to go a different direction now. We started looking at some other stuff, and I've only seen that guy, that other shop. I mean, we still help each other out. I've only seen him get mad twice in 30 years, and that was that was one of them. Every railing section, F and bitch, out into the horse pasture. Stupid C, out into the horse pasture. We didn't get a deposit, you know, and that's that's something I learned. And that's something you have to do, and it's kind of a catch-22 because you'll get these people on TV, you know, don't give these subs a deposit, you know, if you don't know who they are and this and that. Well, I'm the other way. I've done handrails so many times for free and gotten screwed. It's like, you don't give me a deposit, at least for your steel and part of the labor? I'm not doing your job, man. I don't care if it's only 500 bucks in steel. If you can't cover your own steel, how are you going to pay me when I'm done? I remember going rounds with one guy on that. It was a two point like eight million dollar house you know and i hit him up i was like dude i'm gonna need about seven grand up front cover your all your steel and a little bit of labor to get going no i i don't have seven grand i i can't cut you seven grand right now you know can you can you can you wait two or three weeks and i'll just cut you a check for the whole you know fifteen thousand dollars well if you can't cut me a check today for seven grand how the hell are you going to cut me a check for 15 grand in a couple weeks that's how they get you. They get you stringing along and they get you sucked in and then you kind of don't have a choice because you're hoping to recoup any dime you can on the job. None of that shit happens when you're doing heavy equipment repair. The only thing with heavy equipment repair, and that's, you know, that's part of what killed my first marriage, knock on wood, I'm glad that bitch is gone. But, you know, being out at night, that's what happens with the heavy equipment repair. I'd be out till three, four in the morning come back, sleep for a couple hours, get up, start it again, and then just start going all over again. But if uh, if you're looking for getting into the trade, I highly recommend getting into the heavy equipment repair. I mean, I got portable everything. I got portable plasma cutter, portable air arc, portable, you know, anything, anything that pertains to the trade, I've got it on the truck and it's portable. I can take to your site and do whatever you need. So, construction wise it's spending hours looking at prints and that was always my biggest beef with these construction prints the bottom of every page says the same thing field verify all dimensions before fabrication well that's the engineer's way out i don't know how many times i built a square door for somebody hey get build a couple doors for me okay the door is going to be square so you better talk to your freaking framer man and then you get done and you get over there and the door don't fit well your door don't fit well my door is square so you better talk to your fucking framer, man. If he didn't square the door up or the door frame when he put it in, then no, my square door is not going to fit. Well, then they want you to build another door and they don't want to pay anymore. And it's just one disaster after another when it comes to construction. And then you got people that'll just walk off the job, the general, and you end up with another general and having to jump through all their hoops after you already jumped through all the other guys' hoops and homeowners changing their mind and all. It's just a disaster, man. I like the heavy equipment repair. I get to bounce around. I got another wood grinder coming online up towards the foothills. So I'll be bouncing over towards, you know, the mountains and catching him. The other wood grinders just over the state line in another state bounce up there. <clears throat> I like bouncing around. I get to see different stuff. I'm not just stuck in a basement somewhere arguing with a roofer and a drywall and a painter, you know. So just giving everybody a little input. That's kind of what it's been like. You know, in the earlier days, like I said, I picked up quite a bit from uh, 
machine shops and stuff, and that kind of helped get me rolling. But the whole construction thing was there at the same time. And as I progressed through the 38 years, the headaches involved with construction, they're just, they're not worth it, man. And not, not to mention on the construction end, you end up with half of what you got out of the, out of the heavy equipment repair. And we just did a rail for a new guy that's, you know, the other shop didn't pick up the steel, left him hanging. He needed a set of stairs and some railing right away. And we knocked it out. I mean, that last week I traded, I get a grand a day doing heavy equipment repair. I traded four grand in heavy equipment repair to do $1,750 worth of stairs and railing for him. So that didn't work out very good, you know, back to the construction thing. So, and he really liked the rail. He said, man, I'd really like it if you guys did all the rail. He's got 24 more sets of stairs and stuff coming up. And I mean, he's calc the numbers. He's willing to pay 110 bucks a foot for railing to get good quality railing and welds and painted. He said he didn't like the other railing that the other shop had done before they disappeared. So they didn't have any problems with what me and my partner did. So, but anyhow, just passing along a little bit of info, the road I've been down the path I took towards the end and why I took it. And there's just no comparison to being out at 10 o'clock at night in a field all by yourself, just your pistol in your pocket and hard rod in a bucket and throwing a few repairs on, no inspectors. You know, every now and again, a big June bug might come down and smack the welder because it was <laughs> out there at midnight or something. I thought that one night, I thought somebody was messing with me. I, it sounded just like a rock hit the wood grinder. It was about 12.30 in the morning. Wow. Pulling an all-nighter. And I, man, I popped my helmet. And I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I'm 10 miles out in the middle of nowhere. Nobody around. Couldn't see any lights or nothing. And I thought, man, that's that's weird, man. I went and made, went and got my pistol, made sure I had it on me, and went back to Weldon. And five minutes later, man, wow. It just sounded like somebody walked up next to me with a ball-peen hammer and smacked the steel. Wham. Biggest June bugs I've ever seen in my life. I mean, these June bugs were the size of freaking golf balls, man, if not bigger. They were zeroing in on that light. So, and they, they just crash into the steel, bam. But outside of fighting a few bugs, that's the only thing you'll fight doing heavy equipment repair at midnight or one in the morning. You might fight a few mosquitoes and a couple bugs, but that's about it. It's just so many less headaches. That's the path I'm going to continue down for a few more years till pushing 60 now. About 61 or two, I want to be able to walk away from this field stuff and all of it in general. I got a $30,000 Torchmate 3 sitting in storage and get that put up, and that'll kind of be my retirement gig, the roll-off truck and, the, and so on. So anyhow, the CAD. But just wanted to pass that on, give everybody kind of something to think about, new people that are getting into it and the direction you're going and give you a little heads up on what you're, you're getting into. So everybody be safe out there.